And if we are destroying that nearly 4,000 times every single day, then abortion indeed is the greatest destroyer of peace in our world. And 40 Days for Life has been nothing more than an invitation to put the focus back on prayer, back on fasting, and to go to where the injustice takes place. And I know Nikki later is going to ask you for a time commitment. Some of you have already committed. There's a table out in front where you can sign up for hours. No one has ever gone out there and prayed for one hour or two hours, or if you go for an hour a day, or you go 10 hours a week, or whatever your commitment is, no one's ever regretted it. The first time I went out to pray, I didn't want to do it. I was scared. I was nervous. I was very timid. I didn't even know at the time Planned Parenthood did abortions because the town that I came from in East Texas didn't have an abortion facility. But I was asked by a young, beautiful woman who I was dating and hoping to marry. And women have a lot of power over men. And I ended up marrying her. We have four beautiful children. But she would go out and pray. And I'll never forget the first time I saw a woman leave and just the sadness all over their face. Relief is what abortion promises, and yet it leaves the woman with emptiness and with despair. And then you're there. And for many of you, or for many of the women rather, you are the only witness to God's love for that woman that she may have ever seen in her entire life. And sometimes the surprise that the women have when they're leaving and they see that you're not judging them, you're not screaming at them, telling them that they're going to burn in hell, that you're praying for them before, during, and after their abortion, and certainly before, during, and after their change of heart, if that, if that happens. So I encourage you to take as many hours as you can, because it matters. And we can do anything for 40 days. That's why it has a beginning and it has an end. Because we never know. Pittsburgh could be the next abortion facility that closes. After all of the 40 Days for Life campaigns here, after all of, of your tireless efforts, crazier things have been done and that needs to be our expectation for those 353 babies that die every single month in Pittsburgh due to abortion. We can do something for those women. And so I encourage you to, to take one hour a day or five hours a week, whatever your commitment is. Go back to your church. Tell Nikki that you're willing to, to take a half a day or a full day to help sign up volunteers. Because it's always a cliche to say that it's about hearts and minds. But thank God that we don't have the luxury of waiting on Washington, D.C. to fix a moral crisis that is going on in our own backyard. But we do have the obligation and the privilege and the joy to do something for those women and to do something with our Lord, taking Him out there, getting out of the way, and allowing Him to work miracles. That's the difference, is prayer. If we go out there to change the world, we're probably going to make it about five minutes. We're going to throw our hands up in the air. We're going to get depressed or angry or both. And we're going to flake out. We're going to give up and we're not going to show up again. But if we go out and we pray, we realize that we are bringing peace to a place that has no peace. And we're bringing the Prince of Peace. And our Lord, no matter what the situation, no matter what the background is of the women going in, no one grows up wanting an abortion. No one grows up wanting to work in the abortion industry. And yet when we are there and we are witnessing him, he is irresistible even in the most desperate of circumstances. And that's why we've seen the hearts and minds change. It is not a cliche. It is the reality of the situation to focus on one woman, one heart, one mind at a time. And in order to do that, we have to go to where the abortions are actually taking place. G.K. Chesterton tells us that it is only 10 minutes after all hope seems lost that hope first begins to dawn. And we have a lot of reasons and a lot of signs to have a lot of hope that abortion in our nation will end. In our Lord's worst moment, when he was killed and murdered on a cross for us and for our sins, 
Most of his followers had run off. And yet John and Mary were at the foot of the cross because even in his worst moment, to be in his presence is better than being anywhere else on the entire planet. And what did he do at that worst moment when all hope seemed lost? He converted a criminal. He converted a criminal and opened up the gates of heaven to a man who was condemned to die next to him. That's why we go out, is that hope for conversion, because our future is at stake, there are souls at stake, and there is no greater joy than seeing an unborn child, than seeing, than seeing a child come into this world who was this close to perishing because we set a little bit of time aside from our busy jobs and our schedules and everything else we have going on to offer up one hour or to take half a day and to go out and to pray for those who cannot speak for themselves. God bless you.